1985 onwards, you're in a new timeline and essentially the new world can begin. But the intensity of this next seven years is going to be greatly challenging at times. Um, it is going to be shocking for many people and it's going to shock a lot of people awake who previously weren't seeing some of either the corruption in the world or some of the inequity or some of the imbalance. They were perhaps just, you know, in their own lives, maybe because they were just trying to survive because the system has most people will also make those who are more aligned with the wound of darkness even louder, even more kicking back, even more attempting to control and hold on to old energy templates that have been on the planet for a very long time. And, you know, it's funny, I, I don't know if you've all had this experience, but isn't it amazing how you can be at a party or in a group of 50 to 100 people it just takes one, one person with a very aggressive, destructive, loud energy to suddenly erupt in that room and it changes the whole frequency. So one of the things I try and remember as we go through this, and particularly because the, the media bombards us with these horrific images and our media is so immature, like our media is not helping us. Well, how can we transform this? How can we help transform the trauma that the people watching this are feeling? What are we doing to actually try and have a world that isn't just you throw this that way, we'll throw this that way, that the media is, 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 is feeding us the same base fear uh, triggering information over and over again without any maturity of, well, we're here on the planet right now for this passage of time. What are we going to do to see how we can get underneath this and change it? But it's gridlocked to we the people. So there is a, a very, for me, there is a very, I try and remember that, you know, 90% of people or more do not want any of this stuff that's going on, but we are held into an age old battle that has woven itself into the political and the corporate arena. And that again, we, the people just have to kind of go along with it and suffer. And that's the thing the Z's say is about to change. They say you are moving out of a paradigm and, and this will, they say this is going to be playing out over the next decade or two. It's not happening overnight where the, the gap between the power system on the planet and we, the people, has to close. And how it closes and what kind of collateral damage youthful selves. Um, and one of the things I'm aware of whenever I speak about 2024 or anything big, I'm mindful because I can literally feel as we record this, because I'm used to working with the camera and I'm used to timelines jumping. So I can feel a portion of this audience who've gone, <gasps> 2024, oh my God, what? And we have to get really mindful of our own nervous system activation Correct. because that's what went wrong in 2020. In 2020, if you get enough people scared about, they all have our unique traumas. Like if you were a child that was, you know, in a, in a violent household, you might be through technology. So I think that's something that many of us are beginning to feel and crave. We need our good human community and allies. And if you don't have that in your life, I would make 2024 that to be your strongest intention because we need each other like we need nature. When you're in the room with another human being, or even if you're having a phone conversation or a, a video call with someone, it's better than just watching content that you're not necessarily participant in because we all need each other for our healing and our journey right now. And that's going to be even more important in the years ahead. So I just wanted to say that to anyone watching who is sitting at home mostly living through the screen it's really important to get your your support systems your feedback loops your other sources of information with other human beings and i think a lot of sensitives because they can find it challenging especially if they have trauma to interact with other human sure. beings it's like oh it's just easier to choose my programming but pay attention especially if on social media, as to what you're seeing. And if you go, oh my God, the world looks like it's falling apart. Well, then you're watching too many, the world is falling apart videos. 
and not enough of the balance side. So that's just something to be mindful of for some, some people who might be tuning into this. Good, a pleasure to be back with you, the cosmic warrior who disguises himself as a laughing Buddha. Uh, it is good to be with you and your community for you are warriors, uh, not necessarily warriors in the sense that many of you mm, see how that word relates or pertains to war, for we recognize that the word war has a very dense vibration. Very few of you hear that word and feel any kind of uplift or opening in your body. In fact, the opposite. But a warrior is one who can bring balance, if effective, in the way that they hold themselves. So, for all of you who are tuning into this, and for you, Alex, as the designated, we will say, leader or conductor of what you are brewing here, there is a power inside each of you that is growing. For some of you, it's getting very uncomfortable. Some of you are feeling angrier than you are used to, and you are a little concerned about it, for you don't necessarily want your anger to be uncontrolled and run out into the world in a way that is destructive. But bear in mind that if you are feeling the fire or the anger in your body and you are not necessarily just throwing it like a flame at everyone around you or the world in general, you are simply powering up on what we would call your activism. So the part of your inner body that is beginning to recognize there are things you want to say, do, and ways you want to behave differently to bring change. Again, the word activism is tricky, for there are many negative connotations that have been given to this word, uh, particularly by those in power. Ha! Huh, you need to pay attention to that. Mm, anybody who is threatening the status quo of the power system will, of course, be branded or cast in a negative light. That is how uh, people try and win battles. They try and dethrone or defame what they perceive as the enemy to them maintaining their power growing by what you would call the old guard, the old system, who have been in many ways preparing for this time in their own way too. So you are in what we would call a battle of consciousness. And those of you who are here as activists, those of you who previously have been here to soothe and nurture others, you are becoming a little more truth-telling in what you are perceiving and seeing and feeling. And equally, those of you who perhaps before were the harsh truth tellers in your group who cared not much for people's feelings or how they mm, 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 absorbed that medicine, you are beginning to soften a little. And you are beginning to recognize that being able to create harmony is a superpower. It is not mm, soothing for the sake of you not being able to handle conflict energy. It is not you trying to avoid conflict energy. It is you recognizing the power that conflict energy is always wounded energy. So when you are able to harmonize conflict energy in others, in yourself, for others, you are actually doing a great service of freeing consciousness back to the template of oneness that is possible on earth, but won't be possible for some time. So there are a whole group of you who have come here as an experiment in consciousness to see how much oneness you can help seed and feed on the planet, while also experiencing your own personal, what you might call karma, we would sometimes call them relearnings on earth, that relate to not just other lifetimes you may have had on this planet and others, but many of you choose to take on the karma of other beings, other people. There are many of you who come here and decide that you are going to clean up a lot of collective trauma by embodying it so deeply for so many people that you will mm, take the hit for sometimes Hyundai mm, wild and allowed to play out in wilder ways. So you have all experienced those, what we would call high intensity deaths or exits from your body. And when you cross over from an experience like that, your suffering is very quickly balanced. Those who cross over from intensely difficult or horrific deaths, uh, ones where pain is enacted or ones where uh, their life is suddenly taken in a way where what we would call darker consciousness decides that the consciousness of light needs to be taken off the planet. 
you are very quickly scooped up at a soul level. So there is a very fast repair that starts to happen to the souls who have gone through those kinds of traumatic deaths. Now, that doesn't necessarily take away the fact that none of you want to witness or see or know that that is happening to anyone on the planet or to yourselves. And that also gets triggered for many of you. You feel empathy for what you're seeing going on uh, for other people. And then you also play out the horror of what if that were happening to me? And how would I feel about that? Well, what we will say is in many of those cases, you go into more of a, we will say, disassociative blur in your mind uh, when you are in those kinds of experiences. So your human mind right now will start telling you a story of what that might feel like for you or what that might feel like for the person. And we can say that things are a lot more electrified than mental consciousness is allowed to, um, shall we say, experience or track when you are in ex an experience like that. So firstly, the story you might be telling yourself about that suffering might be different to the person experiencing it. Secondly, what you have to understand your world becomes more shrouded in the other. So part of your role and part of what you are needed for is to find those areas of light, joy, and heart in yourself. Some of you are caregivers extraordinaire. You are either literally a caregiver in your life, in your family, in your work, or you are somebody who simply carries that vibration wherever you go. So you have to, if you aren't uh, receiving uh, light, joy, and heart in those relationships or the role that you find yourself in in your relationships, you have to start including some people who give back to you too, where those energies can flow. And you have to start prioritizing being a guardian of light, joy, and heart in yourself as you navigate these tumultuous times, because it is those higher frequencies that allow you to move beyond the base frequencies of fear and conflict that are right now being pumped into your world. They want you to become them. Fear and conflict want you to become fear and conflict. And the way you become something different is to see the fear and conflict for what it is, Perhaps even notice the parts of your body, mind, and heart that respond to it. But then to remember that you, dear one, are far, far bigger than those small, sewn-in vibrations that have been sewn into your planet for a very long time. But this is the period of time where that clamp around fear and around limitation on the planet is losing its grip. So it is a wild time on Earth for sure and unpredictable. But because of that wildness and because of that unpredictability, you have to ask yourself, how much more wild and unpredictable might your life? Yeah, so you can find me at leeharrisenergy.com. So every month I do a free energy update on YouTube. It's about 30, 35 minutes long where I go through what you might be experiencing this month and how to deal with it. Um, I have a course that's about to start, which funnily enough is, is called Rebirth, Enter Your Next Level, um, which is for 2024. It's in January. And it's basically a transformation course where you can look at where you're at in your life right now and decide where you want to go in the year to come. So even though we do it in January, people get full replay access. So some people take it in July or whenever they want to. And there's a lot of channeling in that. There's a lot of energy teaching. The earth you wind up on is already an earth that doesn't experience the idea of the destruction that you're talking about. But you have to take the actions that give other people a chance to also see in you a living example of how to take those actions too. Sharing information, gives people options like what we're doing right now. They can decide whether they want to apply this kind of information in their lives that makes a difference in how they experience the idea of their shift to different versions of Earth, or they can ignore it all. It's none of our business what they do because we don't know their path. The different materials, I can have different strategies of my own, but I'm in the game of chess and I know that other people are playing the game of chess in their own way, with their own pieces, their own strategies, but we're all here playing chess based on what we believe to be true about ourselves and our place in the agreement, in the collective agreement. So the observer effect 
is actually the observer cause in terms of physical reality functioning kind of like a mirror reflecting mm -hmm. back to us what we're putting out. So as quantum physics is beginning to understand, we are participating in what we're experiencing. It's not an, uh, it's not an objective thing. It's a subjective thing. <clears throat> so when we have a certain perspective, when we have a certain belief system, that's all we get to see. When we change our beliefs, we can see something else. It's a very multi-layered holographic kind of thing. Like we said, everything is here, but 99% of it is invisible to us until we shift our frequency, like changing the channel on the TV. Then we get something different that's been here all the time, but we couldn't see it because we weren't on the same wavelength. We weren't on that channel. So, Everything is the result of the fact of what we choose to observe based on what we believe to be true or what is relevant for us to experience in the theme that we chose to explore as actually demonstrates parallel realities. Because just even our sense of time and space, because you have these ideas of I can be in a multiple positions and I can have multiple moments in time, each one of those moments is a different reality because it's a different perspective of the only single moment and the only single place there is. And therefore, those are parallel realities. Different moments, different places are parallel realities because there is only one place and one moment to begin with fundamentally. Did that make sense? In the same way, the instant you think of being somewhere else, you're there. The instant you think of any kind of idea, you know it. There's no time lag there is more to us than just this and that's one of the side effects that result from it is you start to tap into the fact that those things do exist <clears throat> and you start making stories about them <clears throat> we're all about stories physical reality is all about stories it's what story are you telling yourself story structure is built into our psyche uh, that's why some stories resonate with us and some stories don't, because when people don't follow story structure, it doesn't feel real. When you do follow story structure, it sticks. It's one of the most efficient ways to transfer information to someone is to tell it in the form of story structure. And then it sticks. And that's why we have stories that have lasted for thousands upon thousands of years that go down from generation, generation, generation. You have to follow that story structure because that's built into our psyche and we resonate to that. So, yeah, as we're expanding our story about what's possible. And when you do that, more things come into the story. We become more aware of things that have been around us all the time, but were heretofore invisible to us. Now they're becoming visible to experience these things. The, the kinds of synchronicities that start to explode in your life when you really follow this idea are staggering they're stunning it's just like this is like magic happening you just go with the flow and things fall into place in a way that you wouldn't have thought would be statistically possible we have to get everything out on the table it's like here's all the possible choices positive and negative the brightest bright and the darkest dark choose what do you prefer? Which direction are you going to go in? How are you going to solve these issues? How are you going to transform these problems? So <clears throat> it's up to each of us to decide for ourselves, individually and collectively, what kind of planet do we really prefer? Mm. We're creating the continuity of space and time. So the idea is when you are of a certain frequency, that's moving in a positive direction, when you're navigating in a positive direction, when you're taking the actions that are representative of the kind of world you would prefer to live on, mm -hmm. you are moving in that direction. So the earth you wind up on is already an earth that doesn't experience the idea of the destruction that you're talking about. But you have to take the actions that give other people a chance to also see in you a living example of how to take those actions too. Sharing information gives people options like what we're doing right now. They can decide whether they want to apply this kind of information in their lives that makes a difference in how they experience the idea of their shift to different versions of Earth. Or they up and down Main Street multiple times. 
and it informed how I felt like I was supposed to behave here. So I just started hating back. My nervous system was always on edge. I'm always ready to fight. I'm always ready for war. Hypertension is a given when you always operating in an energy kind of stability where it's like, I can tolerate this until I get home. <laughs> you know, son's mother, Trish, she's working from home. Uh, so I call up to her and I say, um, uh, I think I need to go to the emergency room. This is not getting better, it's getting worse. Now, as we're in the car, I'm losing my breath. It just feels like I'm suffocating, you know? I'm just losing my breath and I'm breathing really deep to try to stay conscious. Immediately, I'm, I'm asleep. And I always try to make note of this fact because people say you're hallucinating, right? But I passed out before I went into the area where they were working on me, edit like I'm looking that way. But I'm not seeing anything, but where the people were, there were dots that almost looked like a nighttime sky. And that stuff was clear to me in that state. But as far as explaining it to my conscious mind, and is there's no way I can know why in the stories that we choose, it becomes a negative experience, a positive experience. But it's all just story already equipped with uh, we're out of function here. And then we're not taught to honor that in any way whatsoever. We're taught who to be, what to be, what we are, what our name is, how we, you know, what's important, who we supposed to like, who we supposed to hate, how we supposed to, you know, we're told all of this stuff. And then we expect people to develop into authentic human beings when they've never made a decision for themselves at all. They just accepted prepackaged identities. There's no choice in that, that you're just selecting from among what's not even available to you, but it's actually what's pushed on you by people who actually love you. They're giving you this advice because they love you. They're telling you to think this way because they think it, it worked for them, you know, and it's, I just want you to, you know, be okay, but it doesn't work. And this soul thing, you know, that is infinite and it leaves this place is perfect. It doesn't hold on to human trauma. It doesn't hold on to this stuff. It doesn't, it, but it's permanent. And it's what you leave here as, that's what you are in this moment with our attention. And as long as we can um, own our attention and not allow our attention to be totally manipulated and, and injected with a bunch of software that, isn't, that doesn't originate inside of, galvanize our attention in different ways, then we can magnify our creative capacity. If an individual can focus their attention on what they want and get it, 